Thank you for coming into what into the temporary poetry zone. That's really brave of you. Thank you. And um, I've just I've been poet in residence with Regen for just about three months now, and it took me a little bit while to get going. And um, I was sort of all at sea. I wrote loads and loads. I wrote a thousand pages of notes, none of them actually a poem. And uh, gradually began to come together. And the thing that, that uh, really helped me was first of all talking to the Regen team. And I sat down with about, uh, about 16 people in the team. And uh, it seemed from the talk that I had, maybe the questions that I asked them, that their life was full of hardship and pain, going out into the world and being told by people, well, you see, the thing about renewables is most of the energy just leaks out into space, so it's a bit pointless. And um, anyway, the climate change is made up by, by some people and, uh, and all this sort of thing, and it's very hard. And, uh, so the first poem that I wrote, as officially part of this project, was, was kind of on, on their behalf. And I'm just going to tell you about the structure of this little reading. It's basically, I'm just going to read you some poems and tell you a little bit about where each of them came from, hopefully not too much. And um, I'm going to start with a really, really long one. And they're going to get shorter as I go through. And I want that to in, induce a state of optimism in you. It can only get better. Okay. And uh, this one is called An Unchanging View. Okay, and it's a, it's a kind of compendium of voices. Some of them are voices that I have personally heard. Some of them are voices that I have heard tell of by the Regen team. And some of them I just made up because I thought that's the kind of thing that they'd say. Okay, and what I've done is actually probably misrepresent all these voices. But it's a kind of inverse rank from the point of view of imagine that you're just trying to engage someone in a very civilised conversation about the community renewable project in their area. And they're kind of difficult to talk to. Okay, I'm assuming that you're with me. <clears throat> on, on doorsteps, driveways, function rooms, civic halls, comes the sound of the banging of heads against walls. There's no word you can say, there's no deed you can do in the face of a right to an unchanging view. I think that must be the title. I know it rhymes, but it's actually the title. I'm as green as the next person. Some would say greener. I think fracking's obscene, but I'll say what's obscener. Because it's not just about fact, it's as much about feeling. And to change someone's view is the worst sort of stealing. I know what I know, and I know how I know it. I've done all my working, I don't have to show it. There's so much in life that's outside one's control, but my views are my own. That's how I roll. And I just realised, I've got, I've got the original draft copy, not the finished copy in front of me. Oh my god. This is terrible. Okay, carry on. Whatever you think, be assured you don't know the length of the shadow your structure will throw. The, the ripples go further than you can suppose. There are forces at work. Tap side of nose. And my question is this, what's in it for you to challenge my right to an unchanging view? I don't say I agree, but there's plenty of folks who'll tell you this climate change thing is a hoax. Not exactly a hoax, but you know, not proved. Has the ice disappeared, or has it just moved? Hmm? I'm not saying I know, I'm just saying. And let's not forget that last winter it snowed. It's a myth to the maths. Mr. Smith down the road, a retired engineer, I'm reliably told, with no extra grind and a mind of his own, explained that the energy leaches away most of its loss, and that's what they say. It's so inefficient, a terrible waste, all of that power leaking back into space. It's here in the paper, if it isn't true, why don't the solar tide win people sue? We don't throw out signs, we just pick and choose. And a friend of a man who I actually knew met a man on a train who confirmed it. So, don't believe all you're told. Have you been to the Arctic? It's still really cold. Okay? I'm not saying I know, I'm just saying. I know this renewable thing's all the rage, I know clean green energies come into fashion, I welcome debate and an informed discussion, but what are your sources and where's your compassion? Have you seen a kestrel that suffered concussion? Mm? Do you hold nothing dear? Do you really not care? We can't see them from here, but we know that they're there. There's a blot on a beauty spot, not a capital crime, and did those feet in ancient time? Mm? That's my place. What's true is what's carved in the bones and the heart. So what do I know? Where do I start? Correct me if I'm wrong, I can take correction. Not one of these turbines has stood for election. It's undemocratic, they're not very nice. They lower house prices, they throw lumps of ice. 
when the wind's quicker, you get shadow flicker. If it, people get fixed and sick, people get sicker. You don't seem concerned. Don't you share my revulsion? Do you like seeing pensioners having convulsions? Widely known side effects barely get mentioned. They cause social division and family tension. Birds get confused and sheep get depressed. No one in 20 miles gets any rest. Soufflés won't rise. There are more traffic jams. There's a drop in the pass rate of piano exams, proven. <laughs> I know what I know and I know what I say, and your facts and figures can't blow it away. Your reasoned rebuttals can melt in your mouth. And anyway, none of the land around here faces south. And if you're going to quote figures and point to a graph, I think you're going to speak to my better half. You've picked the wrong fight and you haven't a clue. And we have a right to an unchanging view. These plans were not passed by a panel of peers and our rights are enshrined in the depths of our fears. In the lines in our foreheads, the crease in our trousers, in the deeds of our forebears and the deeds of our houses. I know what I know in my bones and my bowels and anyway, what have you got against owls? I've heard all your facts, I've gritted my teeth, I've stayed calm and relaxed while I seethed underneath. I've been quite coherent, it's you who's confused. You with so much to gain while I've so much to lose. I'm simply expressing legitimate doubt and it's your turn to listen, it's my turn to shout. It's not just my taxes I've paid, but my dues. And I am entitled to unchanging views. I'm just sticking up for the natural order. So go back and say to your masters at Mordor, that the jewel in the crown of my message to you is that I have a right to an unchanging view. Yes, I do. Now get off my land. Thank you. Uh, that's... Thank you very much. That's, that's the long version of the long one. Unedited, unexpurgated, way too long. Okay, it gets, it gets magnificently shorter now. What I, the, I think Chloe mentioned that the overall title of this, of this poetry residency, we decided to call it The Element in the Room, because it's kind of cheeky. Well, okay, it gives me a right to talk directly about elements. I can pretend that I'll say things that are unsayable, even though they're obviously sayable, I wouldn't be saying them. Um, and it also sounds quite childish. And the next one I've got to read to you is I thought, it sounded, I thought The Element in the Room sounded vaguely Dr. Seussish. And so I tried to write this next poem, which is just called The Element in the Room, in the style of Dr. Seuss. You know Dr. Seuss, the cat in the hat, etc. Thing one and thing two. This one nods towards thing one and thing two. I use more complicated words than Dr. Seuss because I'm a poet in residence for a renewable energy company. You understand my position? Okay. Uh, also, uh, the references to science are all, are all absolutely wrong, apart from I think I understand the first law of thermodynamics mentioned at the end. Okay. On a blustery day, breezing in from the west, a gust is persuaded to stay as a guest. Then a biddable beam and amenable ray that was just shining through is invited to stay. Element one and element two would like to come in and say, how do you do? Tucked in behind sockets, they're lurking for certain. They're clustered in pockets behind the neat skirting. So keen to get heating and lighting, it's hurting. They've careered along cables at speeds close to thought. Now they're ready to caper, to dance and cavort. Element two and element one want to get busy. They want to have fun. Then the big switches flick to the elements flock, zoom in, illumine the digital clock. And hickory dickory ever so quickly emanate oodles of bright electricery. That's electricery, as in the 70s film uh, TV series Cat Weasel. We all, we all had someone in our class at school who was called Cat Weasel, I like to think. Okay. The charge is at large that was hid in the grid. There's juice in the looks that will do as it's bid. But whiz in our widgets and frost in our frigids. A beautiful thing when the elements come. Flat screens glimmer, white goods hum. The elements animate every appliance. They channel the sun and the wind like a sail to sort of like magic, but mostly like science. The pot and the kettle have formed an alliance. And the room comes alive with the jiving of jewels. They go up with the gadgets. They tango with tools. The toaster is toasting. The shaver is shaving. The rotisserie roasting. The microwave waving. Henry the Hoover is out of manoeuvres. The tumble dryer is tumble drying. Dehumidifies, dehumidifying. The radio rolls out a popular song. The waffle iron goes on and on and on. Our home is where the megahertz is. The blender blends. The tea's made, curtsies. 
for a bit. Scampering amps to the waltz of the vaults, then the main fuse goes, and everything halts. Element one and element two have died. What are we going to do? Element two and element one have left the building, up and gone. Nobody pouts, nobody panics. We trust in the first law of thermodynamics. Energy doesn't die, it's just redeployed. It can't be created, it can't be destroyed, it can't be frustrated, it won't get annoyed. It can't be upset, it can't get in a mood, but it can be renewed and renewed and renewed. Can be scooped from the sky, can be sieved from the sun, and then ushered inside that we've hardly begun to begin, in fairness, to harness the furnace or funnel the furies in earnest. We'll never run out, there's always enough. You can't run out of physics and science and stuff. And the one thing we'll never run out of is weather. And the weather won't ever, no, not ever, ever, the weather won't run out of puff. The end. That's it. Getting right. Thank you. Getting shorter and shorter now. Now this, actually the next shortest one should have been, I wrote this, I wrote more of a kind of lyrical one called The Ballad of Further Down the Line a sort of slightly futuristic ballad, and I didn't bring it by mistake. I brought loads of stuff that was, anyway. But I've got, I've got one called The Shock of the New. Now, this was written uh, in response to my first encounter with solar panels in a, in a field. My first massive solar field. Now, I've actually got solar panels on, my, on the roof of my house, and I'm very keen on solar panels. I think they're, I think they're a wonderful thing, I think they're the way of the future, I think they're the, they're the way that we're going. But when I turned around a corner in Somerset and saw my first solar field, I didn't know what I was looking at. And I actually contacted my NIMBY brain, which is the, the part of the brain that sort of, you know you've got the fight or flight reflex, you've got the, the, you've got the reptilian brain, the limbic brain, and you've got the sort of neocortex, the thin veneer of civilization that sometimes listens to Radio 3, it's really quite sophisticated. And Back there, the, the, the NIMBY brain is sort of like fight or flight or, or write a strongly worded petition. And it's that sort of instant response. And this poem takes me through a kind of exploded first few seconds of meeting my solar panel field from this kind of deep suspicion and hostility towards awareness that it's a kind of peaceful entity, towards the kind of epiphany of this is this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So imagine we turn it, we, we turn a corner. Whoa, slow down, stop, jaws drop, what is this crop? In ranks across a five acre field, an immaculately tidy, strangely symmetrical yield. In the first half second, the nimby in me stirs, the nimby brain whirs, it says, dark wafers on guard. It sees Darth Vader's business card. The unprepared brain, no clues, no hints, sees an angle poised posse of glossy, super intelligent mints. An alien invasion of something, something plant life is gone. The second half second, the nimby brain begins to calm. It sees they come in peace, they mean no harm. Instead, it sees a huge page of redacted Sudoku. You have to picture that. See supplicant placemats, members of the most worshipful order of coasters, an open air warehouse of flat pack goth garden furniture. In the second half of the, the second second, a light begins to dawn, my skin begins to tingle as I apprehend their angle is the optimum to catch the sun, and then I see synchronized sunbathers, expectant rectangles, oblongs of elegance in their very element siphoning off the sunshine, creaming off the crop of sunbeams. And I say hooray for the array who with silent simplicity turn light to electricity, my dismay into delight. Kin to my panels, my own PV, that charge my handheld iPhone device and boil my cups of tea, and then I reach epiphany and see a choir of angles in a cathedral of stained dark windows, deep as ink, sacred insatiables whose job it is to drink in radiance. Windows to a future not only doable but so much more renewable than the Nambi Pambi Nimbi in me. Who cares to think? The end, of the, just covering the, covering the Nimbi angle. Um, okay, they get really short now, I'm afraid, and I, I know You've, you've, thank you for bearing with me. Now, this next one, I'm going, staying with the solar theme, I actually tried to bring it down, make it smaller, and I tried to follow the journey of just one single photon. 
and I, I, I put more time into actually trying to get the title right for this. I had photo and opportunity. I didn't feel that worked. I wanted to share it with you anyway. In the end, they called it a refugee photon finds romance. So you just imagine that photon. It's very difficult to visualize, but actually we can do it. It's sort of electron microscope of the imagination. To fly so far, so fast, and land so gently upon a panel of planet Earth, eight and one third minutes old, and worth its weightlessness in gold, fallen, faded, cooled, then to be told, hey, photon, get your coat on, you've been pulled. Really proud of that one, Re really like it. You're very kind. Now, actually staying, staying in the short, basically what we're moving towards, by the way, we're moving towards poems with longer, longer titles, but shorter and shorter poems. Eventually we'll get to the place where there's no poem at all, but there are just titles. Because I put the word out asking for titles. I've got to be given some titles today. I put the word out yesterday on Facebook. I was given 120 titles. I won't read you all of them, because one or two are dull. This poem, this poem is called A Partially Submerged Person in Somerset Makes an Implicit Link Between Extreme Weather Conditions and Climate Change whilst hoping the latter may be mitigated by investment in renewable technologies. <clears throat> I want to go renewable so that my streets are less canoeable. Okay. It's just, I decided, I, I, I commissioned a lot of, uh, last time I was here, I actually commissioned a wind turbine poem, and I got people to write one line each, the wind turbine poem. And of all of the lines, my favourite was my own line. It's, it's, just, it's just called The Skywayman, Dick Turbine, Stand and Deliver. It's a poem in itself. The titles that have been offered today, If I Had a What, which I quite like, From Socket to Pocket, it's quite promising, I could, I could write that. Having said that, oh no, no, From Pocket to Socket, I've just ruined that one. It's the other way around. And again, yeah, anyway, it's got a lot of potential. I'm very grateful for that one. This one here, at a slight angle, get the wind power look. Get the wind power look, ride a bike. I'm not sure I'm going to work with that. Power to the people. That's, that's yeah, right on. That's, that's quite generic. I feel, I feel, I can, I feel I can write quite a, quite a good song for that. Uh, where is the bike parking at West Point? That's quite site specific. <laughs> it's quite challenging, quite site specific. It's pertinent to today. Solar goddess. I, I feel like I've already written that one, but that was just an earlier period of my life and it has nothing to do with this. My future world, don't spoil it. It's a kind of a rallying cry. Um, making wind power. Uh, uh, this one, wasted energy. And I think that's got a lot of potential of wasted energy. Another, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, I'm thinking it might be a review of one of my poems, <laughs> as much as a title. Why do people hate me? Brackets, important brackets, philosophical treaties from a wind turbine. That's worth addressing. In fact, it's probably been addressed by the people. Now, I realize this future proof, we've already had, to do, uh, we've had a discussion about this. A couple of us here don't like the word future proof. It implies if you've got a, something that's going to be proof against the future, it implies that the future is horrible. It also implies, you know, it's like you've got to sort of laminate whatever it is you're doing in the present against possible intrusion by the future. It just doesn't feel right psychologically. We've agreed that uh, invitation to join in hearts and minds. Now, I just have to share with you, I just have to share with you some of the hundred plus titles that I was offered by uh, people on Facebook because people on Facebook are clearly um, desperate to try and avoid whatever work they have to do. My favorite, no, I've got various ones. I really liked Ode to Posterity, O-W-E-D, eh? Not that great, okay. Uh, retired old fossils, um, eclectic light. The lights are on, but no one's home. I can write that one, I think that's a quite a good answer. Uh, I really liked, if we could saddle bicycle energy, how would we then pedal it? We like that? Yeah, that's good. Well, I, I, okay. 
someone, someone, an enigmatic person, wrote as their title, "In the unfathomable recesses of the, of, in the unfathomable recesses of the eternal psyche, there rests." Intriguing, but not really going anywhere. Bags for life and other commitment issues. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Oh, E equals MC recurring. I think that's very clever, but I'll have to ask an educated person. I think that's very clever. Not directing, but adjusting our sails. Uh, distilling the wind, condensing the sun. Power to all our friends for the energy that never ends. That was actually Cliff Richard on my... I think, I think you... I did have, oh, I had an actual Michael Rosen. You know Michael Rosen? He stopped by my Facebook page and gave us a line in all seriousness. His one is, this poem is made of recycled words. <laughs> it actually got the most likes because he's famous, I think, so more people read it. And a, a couple of enigmatic ones, one of them, wind, sun, water, children. Well, maybe that's not enigmatic, it's sort of poignant. But the one that, I think, I think the person was responding to that, they wrote, earth, water, air, hamsters. That's a good <laughs> I think things are going to go really well. OK, I think that's a, 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 few, a few different people, obviously not really, think, gave me windmills of your mind. And one, one person gave me windmill farms of your mind, which I thought just went the extra, the extra leg. And finally, C, as in S-E-A, O, two, rising. People, people put a lot of effort into this. <laughs> And I'm not really going to get to write these poems. Um, this is just the last, the last one I'm going to read you from a woman called Lee Smith. It's her, her title was Effective, Non-Defective, Tariff Hopping, Solar Popping, Turbine Pumping, Energy Junking, Renewable, Sustainable, and Biologically Non-Blameable, Not A Bit Insaneable, and Totally Geothermal. It's a poem in itself. Thank you for listening to The Poet. Thank you very much. That's the end of my, that's the end of my bit. <laughs>